Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to talk about what happened overnight. The new PlayStation Pro console that Sony has announced. And the price point it's being launched at. $1,000. What is Sony thinking? Now, yes, as you can tell, I've probably just woken up not long ago. And I was awakening to this news of Pro consoles and, oh, gaming, we're, we're so great, we look at this console that we've just launched. But a thousand dollars? Seriously, Sony? What is Sony thinking? Xbox is across the street building this huge gaming library on the cloud that can be played on anything, can be played on your iPhone, can be played anything you want to play it on. And Sony's here saying, oh, let's launch a thousand dollar console. I remember they did this in the PS3 days and it nearly killed Sony when they did it. And now they're doing the same thing again. History is repeating itself. And I know there's gonna be people in the comments saying, we wanted this, this is our console. This is for the gamers. It's not for the gamers, it's for the profits to Sony. So let's understand what it is. They didn't have to launch a thousand dollar console. And at this point, we might as well just start talking about it. Why wouldn't you just buy a PC? Why don't we just join the PC gamers and become the PC master race. I don't understand how Sony are justifying this. And I get it. If you want to play certain games like The Last of Us, I think they've locked it away on Sony consoles. They're not on Steam. They're not on any other consoles. So you kind of have to have a PlayStation to play certain games. They're not taking the same mentality that Xbox is where it's trying to make it more accessible across multiple platforms. They're doing a completely different approach, locking it away on a console and making you pay $1,000 if you want the Pro model. Now, you don't have to get the Pro model. Don't get me wrong. You don't have to make, get that Pro model. But they could have at least lowered this console, the PS5, and said, you know what? It's the same thing, same thing Apple does every year. Like Apple launched the other day a new phone. And what happens to the 15, the 15 model? They put that down so that the new model can take the place of the more expensive phones from the previous year. Why couldn't Sony do that? There was a good price point for this. And you might say, oh, well, you know, if you're looking at a console, this thing costs 750 when I bought it, and the price has slowly incrementally went up. I think it's went up by like 10 bucks now. Why couldn't Sony just say, hey, we like, we actually, believe that that price point is good for the console. So what we're doing, what we're doing is lowering the PS5 base model to, I don't know, $500 Australian or even lower, go like 450 Australian for the disc model or 550 for the disc model, but 450 for the digital, you know? And then say, okay, and the pro model will be 750 what it initially was, but they're going for a thousand or 700 US, I believe is the cost. I don't, see how, I don't see how people pick this thing up. I mean, if you had like all this backwards compatibility, then fine, good, let's have backwards compatibility. That's a step in the right direction. Like Xbox has all that backwards compatibility. Sony don't even have PS3 backwards compatibility. They don't even have PS2, they can't even get a PS2 emulator running on this thing to an extent. Who is it for? Who is the thousand dollar console for? I don't, I don't get Sony's thinking behind this. And I'm a little annoyed because I know there's gonna be a bunch of people on the internet today saying, ooh, yeah, PS4, PS5 Pro, we must get it, we must, must. But who's the, who is it for? Can someone please explain to me how this console that barely saw its full potential is now outdated and needs to be replaced with a Pro model? I mean, yeah, okay, slightly better ray tracing, six, locked 60 or 120, whatever they're, whatever they're saying the new console is capable of. Uh, why wouldn't you just wait until PS6 at that point? I mean, this console came out in what, 2020? We're already halfway through its lifespan, and they're probably going to put out the next gen consoles in probably 2028, three odd years off, or something like that. You know, they'll put them out around there. These things typically last for seven to eight years. So I don't understand why they wouldn't just say, you know what, let's focus on price point. Let's focus on getting as many players to the PS5 as possible and let's lower the price and make sure that more people can get into the PS5 ecosystem because that's a big problem. People are still playing on the PS4. So yeah, 
This is a bit of a rant, I will admit. I just woke up and I'm very annoyed with Sony. And seriously, there's been times where I've considered selling this thing. Because, yes, I've complained many times about, oh, there's no games on the PS5. Now, obviously, there are games on the PS5. Don't get me wrong, there are a bunch of games on the PS5. But the problem is that they launch them so far apart that it's like, okay, I finished a game, and then you have to wait another 12, 15 months for the next good AAA or whatever game comes out on it. And it's just like, how much legendary IP does Sony have at their disposal? And they talk about, oh, you know, we don't make enough games or whatever. I saw a press release or something a week or two ago. And it's like, you have so much in your back catalog that you could draw from and you choose not to. So Sony at this point, I'm kind of, I'm kind of over the consoles. I'm kind of over this. I'm not going to run across the street and join Xbox, even though I think Xbox are doing great stuff. Xbox fans, you're very lucky. Um, but yeah, I don't know why I would choose a PS5 Pro over a, a high-spec gaming PC. If someone can explain to me what Sony's thinking, please explain it to me. But in the comments, jump in the comments and explain why Sony need a thousand dollar pro console instead of lowering this thing to get more players off the ps4 but yeah that's just a rant guys if you like it tell me what you think in the comments and yeah are you looking forward to spending a thousand dollars on a pro console i'm sure there's some people out there who's like give it to me yeah pro console i can't wait to play spider-man with ray tracing enabled non-stop with 60 frames i'm sure there's going to be the five or ten people out there on the internet who are like yeah i can't wait for this console they should have lowered this greatly if they were going to do it. And I'm talking like hundreds of dollars cheaper. They should have made this cheaper than a slim model of this and got more people off the PS4. Focus on that first. Get more people into the ecosystem. Then launch a pro console. See, it was okay with the PS4. And when they launched PS4 Pro, you already... PS3 by that point was kind of like a, um, a distant thought. It was kind of like, okay, we've... Every, a lot of the players' base has migrated over to the PS4. So when they launched PS4 Pro, it was kind of like, okay, we need that mid-console refresh because The Last of Us is coming out. We need to we need to have a great console for The Last of Us Part 2. We need to have that great console. We need something that can run it. We need Spider-Man Miles Morales. That We need something that can run that. In fact, Miles Morales may have come out in 2020. You can fact-check me on that one. I don't have the facts right in front of me. But, you know what I mean? Like, it made sense for the stronger hardware. What's the next big game on this thing? Astro Bot? Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. If you're looking forward to getting the PS5 Pro console, let me know. I'm sure, um, I'm sure there'll be a hundred comments on this video that just say, Oh, I can't wait to get my hands on this console. This is going to be great for gamers. Yeah, the gamers have won. Yeah, the gamers have won. And they're charging you a thousand dollars for it. Peace.